Welcome to the Nicholas 11X12 technology. Today we are looking at the AMD a 106800K unlocked Richland APU. This is the flagship model of the AMD Richland accelerated processing units. But here's the box with the new design now. Again, this is an A10 6800K APU, or for short, A10 680K right here on the box. This APU uses the same FM2 socket and chipsets as the previous generation Trinity APUs. On the top you can also see some specifications such as the model name, it's a quad core processor, the turbo clock and the base clock. On this side AMD lets you know that this APU is capable of running the AMD Ifinity technology. So this means you can hook up more than one monitor. The max resolution is 5760 by 1200. On the back as always is a description in different languages. And right here on the other side you can see the APU inside the box in a plastic case. Just like the previous generation Trinity APUs, Richland APUs also support the dual graphics technology. Dual graphics means that you pair the integrated graphics of the processor up with the discrete graphics card. Something like that is also known under the name Crossfire. As you can see, the AMD A10 series APUs can only be paired up with the HD 6670 and 6570. The AMD A8 series APUs can also only be paired up with the HD 6670 and 6570. Last but not least, the AMD A6 series APUs can only be paired up with the HD 6570 and 6450. The AMD A4 series APUs do not support the dual graphics technology and can't be paired up with the discrete graphics card. Now let's finally open the box up and see what is included. Well, I actually know what's included, but you get my point. As always, the AMD manual and warranty. Of course, there's also a stock cooler included. It's still the exact same one we've seen on the AMD Trinity APUs. It seems to be a pretty basic but solid heatsink. Thermal paste comes reapplied already. But now to the most important part, the APU. It's inside this plastic case and a nice new sticker is also included. I'll quickly take the processor out so we can take a closer look at it. Here it is now, the new AMD A10 6800K Richland APU. It looks pretty much the same as the previous generation Trinity APUs, but that's normal because the same FM2 socket is still used. Now let's move on to the specifications. The AMD A10 6800K is a quad-core Richland APU with a base clock of 4.1 GHz and a turbo clock of 4.4 GHz. So the base clock got 300 MHz higher and the turbo clock 200 MHz higher compared to the older A10 5800K. This processor features new integrated graphics, the AMD Radeon HD 8670D. The TDP still stood the same with 100 watts. The Richland APUs are still manufactured at the 32 nanometer process. A total amount of 4 megabyte cache is offered, but that being only level 2 cache. There is no level 3 cache on this processor. This APU supports dual channel DDR3 2133 memory natively, which is now higher compared to 1866 on the previous generation Trinity processors. In my case, I'll test the APU with the Gigabyte GA F2A75M D3H motherboard featuring the same old A75 chipset. In CPU-Z you can once again see the specs. What's different right away compared to the older A105800 k are the instructions. AMD added two new instructions, being FMA3 and FMA4. As for the core clock, as you can see, it's going up and down right now. On idle, it'll stay at the stable clock speed, but right now I'm screen recording and that's why it jumps up and down. On load, AMD's turbo core technology will kick in, making this processor run at the listed 4.4 GHz. As always, because this is a black edition processor, it comes with a fully unlocked multiplier, so you can overclock it very easily. For the memory, I have DDR3 2000 MHz memory installed, but my RAM is only running at 1866 MHz in this case. 
DDR3 2133 MHz is also supported, but there's still that memory frequency gap in between with AMD processors. Although my DDR3 2000 MHz is slower than 2133 MHz, the 2000 MHz value is not supported. And this is the gap. My 2000 MHz memory can therefore only run at the next lower value, which is 1866 MHz with these APUs. Now in GPU-Z you can see the integrated graphics, the AMD Radeon HD 8670D. The highlight is the DirectX 11 support, and if you really want to, you could overclock the integrated graphics separately to squeeze more performance out of it. But enough talking about the specifications and the features, let's move on to the benchmarks and see what this processor really can do and if there's an improvement over the last generation.
So there you have it. The AMD A10 6800K definitely is not a bad processor. However, there's really not much of an improvement noticeable over the last generation. AMD mainly focused on improving the CPU side of the APU, but the performance of that CPU side only increased a little bit compared to the A10 5800K. It's pretty much not noticeable. This A10 6800K also features new integrated graphics, the Radeon HD 8670D, but unfortunately there's even less of an improvement noticeable than on the CPU side. Of what I've seen so far is, the CPU side got a tiny little bit faster and the graphics are the same. Who knows, it could just be rebranding. But let's not compare this APU against the previous generation Trinity APU. Let's compare the A10 6800K with the competition. The A10 6800K can be compared to the Intel Core i3-3220 at the time of this video. The A10 6800K is still a little bit slower than the i3-3220 in terms of the raw CPU performance, but in terms of the integrated graphics, the i3-3220 loses by far with its Intel HD Graphics 2500. Unfortunately, the A10 6800K often falls behind in games, even when pairing it up with a strong discrete graphics card such as the HD 7970 GHz edition. Crisis 3 was a shock. It was pretty much unplayable and this was tested with the HD 7970 GHz edition graphics card. I was experiencing some kind of weird lag, pretty much stuttering combined with lag. Although I'm not sure what the problem is, I believe it's the lack of level 3 cache. All the other games work just fine, of course with lower FPS than on Intel CPUs. The integrated graphics is not bad, it can be compared to Intel's new HD Graphics 4600. But still, whether it's the Intel HD Graphics 4600 or the AMD Radeon HD 8670D, the performance is far away from what is needed for a decent gaming experience. The temperatures of the A10 6800K got 9 to 10 degrees Celsius higher with the star cooler compared to the previous generation A10 5800K, but still that's not a problem at all, there's still overclocking headroom. The power consumption however also increased and I'm talking of 10% compared to the older A10 5800K. The temperatures and power consumption increased, but the performance didn't change much at all. I'm slowly starting to question myself, what is the point of Richland? When it comes to the price, right now at the time of this video, the A10 6800K costs a fair bit more than the older A10 5800K, but the performance difference is very small. Both the A10 6800K and the older A10 5800K, however right now, cost more than the Intel Core i3-3220, which offers overall better CPU performance, especially in games with strong discrete graphics cards. The power consumption is also lower on the i3-3220, however, if you don't have the money or don't plan to buy a discrete graphics card, you're definitely better off with the A10 5800K or the newer A10 6800K, because the integrated graphics performance is a lot better. On the other side, you can also overclock this A10 6800K. That's what you can't do with the i3, because it has a locked multiplier. So in simple words, the A10 6800K barely shows any improvement over the A10 5800K of the Trinity generation. The CPU performance of the A10 6800K is still worse than the one on the Intel Core i3-3220 processor. The temperatures got higher compared to the A10 5800K. Same thing for the power consumption. The A10 6800K costs a fair bit more than the A10 5800K, which already costs a little bit more than the i3-3220. Because of the only very small performance improvement, the higher temperatures and the 10% higher power consumption, this A10 6800K seems to be a step backwards. So now to answer the questions of the consumer. Is it worth it to upgrade your system from Trinity to Richland? The answer is absolutely no. There's pretty much no performance improvement. Just the temperature and power consumption got higher and that's a bad thing. But who actually should upgrade to Richland? Well, people with older platforms that don't want to spend a lot of money 
and don't plan to buy a discrete graphics card. This APU will be okay for casual gaming on low settings. If you're coming from the first generation of APUs codenamed Lano, it definitely is worth it to upgrade to Richland or even Trinity as there's not much of a difference. So this time AMD didn't do very well again and I'm a little bit disappointed. Pros are good CPU performance, unlocked multiplier and this processor also supports high frequency memory. Unfortunately, there also are some heavy cons. First, not the best price performance ratio. The CPU part only shows small improvements. Then there are almost no iGPU improvements and last but not least, the temperatures and power consumption got higher over the previous generation processors. And because these are heavy cons, I can only give this APU a 6 out of 10, but still in terms of performance and overall value, I'd still recommend it. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and visit nicholas11x12techx.com to see videos there earlier than on YouTube.